Now, at this point, I'm going to be asking Dr. Diego Poinman to come forward, and he's the Chief Medical Officer at SOMOS Community Care Center, and he's going to be talking to us about nutritional and lifestyle approaches to prevent, manage, and reverse. What word did I say? Reverse. Let's say it again. Reverse. Reverse diabetes. So let's give him a round of applause as he comes. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. So I'm a primary care physician, a family physician, a community physician in uh, Harlem. And I'm part of a network of about close to 3,000 doctors, most of them primary care physicians in the four boroughs, including in Brooklyn. And we are from SOMOS, an organization from SOMOS Community Care. And uh, we serve about one million Medicaid patients. About two years ago, and I would say out of my frustration with that script that I was telling patients like Eric Adams mentioned, I was giving the same script to patients. But I would realize that year after year, the patients would come exactly with the same complaints and exactly at the same point. The most I could do was to discuss insulin and that was about it. The patient would say, I'm not sure, so come in six months, three months, they would continue to discuss insulin. And then at the moment that we have, or at the time that we have so many new medications to treat diabetes. Unfortunately, I don't know if you know, but in medical school, we are not taught, I mean, the nutrition that we are taught is about biochemistry, it's about, you know, again, many, most biochemistry, but we are not taught to talk to people about nutrition to ask people what do they eat. And so we're not trained to that, so we don't ask. So I got with a team at SOMOS, and we started to do some changes. Let me tell you what we did. So I started doing some research. So what's the best diet for people with diabetes and many other chronic diseases? So I came up with a diet that consisted, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go on in depth into that, but what we, what we could get, we could get some money and treat 36 people, patients at a time from our offices, 36 because our freezers could, you know, fit 36 uh, patients. We would expose these people to 10 days of healthy food, mostly whole food, plant-based diet, we would give lunch and dinner. We would give some supplies, mentorship, food buying, meal prep, et cetera, cooking classes. We would work with churches. We would work with schools. We would work with medical offices. You know, we are 3,000 physicians. Some of our offices are like a small apartment, so we could not fit people. But so we could go to the local church in the community, and they would open our doors to those uh, programs. Why? You, would, you can ask, why this, you know? So I came to this country, first this was my frustration with seeing the patient year after year at the same stage or stuck at the same level. The other thing was, when I came to the US, 1995, I'm from Buenos Aires, Argentina, and uh, I ended up in the Bronx. I didn't know what the Bronx was, but I ended up in the Bronx. The South Bronx was my clinic, and I would see mostly, you know, that the Bronx is 60% Latino. So I could get very, I could get along with Latino, same language, same culture, etc. And I would see people from mostly Dominican Republic, but, you know, and other places in Latin America. And I could hear always the same story. We were very active and very healthy at home, back home. And, uh, of course, they were mo mostly more physically active, probably. But also, there was something about the food. They were eating mostly rice and beans, meat once in a while, like four ounces, because it was expensive back home. So they were, had to you know, limit the amount of meat. So mostly, again, rice and beans. A birthday could include a cake, but it wasn't a birthday every day. 
So the exposure, the environment was different. And they would come to the U.S. And again, I was hearing the same thing over and over. And they would come to the U.S. And years would pass. The American dream, great things happen in this country. I would say, you know, amazing things. But the food started to change for these people. And now they were eating more meat and more chicken and more pizza and the cheese and the saturated fat, etc. They were mostly moving to the standard American diet. And again, their health, as it was presented earlier on, they start getting all these diseases of these big cities. So we tried to move them to a whole food plant-based diet. We exposed them to 10 days because we think, while well, they're starting to think how do they change us, we can give the education. We start to work with this power plate. And the power plate, as you see, includes four groups, mostly. Includes fruits, vegetables. Everyone understands what a fruit and a vegetable is including vegetable starchy vegetables, because that's the other thing. People think that vegetables include green leaf, leaf vegetables. But no, we include starchy vegetables. Grains, most of my patients have no clue what a grain is. They can name maybe rice, and that's it. So we try to expose them to other grains, like oats, buckwheat, couscous, farro, and there's a list, the list goes on and on. So we try to explore new grains. And legumes, Usually, again, rice and beans is the food. So legumes, people understand what lentils is, etc. And then we add, uh, basically, nuts and seeds. That's basically the diet. No magic. This is the diet. A very, like, normal diet, which I think is the best diet. Again, doing some research that what people should eat. Let me show you this graph, which shows the standard American diet on the left, mostly... 50% carbs, but again, that's a problem. People get, and I'll tell you later, but usually people get so afraid about carbohydrates because that's what the carbohydrates of the standard American diet means, which is simple carbs. It's refined carbs, which we're taking all the nutrients, all the water, all the fiber. That's the carbs that we're consuming. And then animal protein, 15%, and then saturated fat, the cheese, the meat, the chicken, at the 35%. So we change them again for 10 days to a diet consistent mostly of 80% carbs. Yes, 80% carbs, but these are carbs. Again, it's the same word, but there's a different food. These are complex carbs, the grains, the legumes, the fruits and the vegetables are mostly carbs. So 80, 90% carbs we give them, 10% protein, including those, the first question that I get, doctor, where am I going to get the protein from? So all those foods have plenty of protein. And the fat, that's what a plant-based diet consists of. So 10 days of this. And this is something that I get asked a lot. And this, this is the secret of the day. If you want to write something or take a picture of this, do it, because Mostly as a family doctor, the main thing that people come to my office is they want to lose weight, right? And this is the secret to weight loss, is calorie density, which is the amount of calorie, I mean, the amount of calorie per gram in a food or in a fruit class. The thing is, we don't talk about grams because no one understands what a gram is, but we talk about pounds. So it's the amount of calories per pound of food. Sorry. So... Basically, as you see, you get a vegetable, which is 100 calories per pound, which is very, you know, basically tiny. And then you have oils, which is 4,000 calories per pound. So it's a 40, you know, difference between the two. And then the secret that why our patients can sustain this diet is because if you see, the 80% of the food that we give to, or we provide, or we tell people to consume, stands at the second level, which is about 400 calories per pound. And we know that human beings usually consume four or five pounds 
of food a day. Depends, you know, I might a little bit more, so I'm, you know, six foot, you know, 175 pounds, but, you know, in general, four or five pounds of food. So if you're going to give food, like in the second stomach, that you see, that's a stomach, you see, at a 400 calories per pound, you're going to be full, you're going to be satisfied because of that fiber, the water, the nutrients, that satiety. Satiety comes from the word satisfaction. You know, everybody says, I'm going to start a diet on Monday. I'm going to go green salad for lunch. I'm going to skip breakfast, <laughs> green salad for lunch. And then it comes 7 p.m. Luckily, you can make it to the second day. And then it's over. Well, if you start changing and thinking, you don't have to think about calorie density. But if you go to those four food groups that I mentioned, that's of calorie density of what, about 400 calories per pound. So you're gonna eat 2,000 calories and you're gonna get five pounds of food. And that's the secret, you're never gonna be hungry. This is an interesting slide that I wanted to present and I show it to patients because it shows you the composition of two types of food. Let's say dinners, a meal. Let's, let's talk about a meal now. So on the left, you have 500, you see like a TV dinner, whatever, that's 500 calories. So people can have a dinner of 500 calories on the lower side, but 500 calories, you know, it's okay. So 500 calories of plants on the left and 500 calories on the right when it says animal-based of a meal that consists mostly of chicken, pork, meat, etc. Look at the difference. Cholesterol, zero with the plant-based diet. 137 with the animal-based. And again, same calories, 500 calories. Fat, see the protein, about the same. This is something interesting, right? You get about the same of proteins with a plant-based diet and with an animal-based diet. Fiber, zero fiber in animal products. Again, zero fiber in any animal products. 30 grams of fiber on the plant base, you get the vitamins, you get the vitamins, you get the vitamins, all on the left side, very little vitamins and nutrients and fiber on the right side. I think the problem we're having in this country is not protein, everybody's crazy about protein, it's fiber. I think that's the magic word, fiber. So people ask me, but doctor, where's the evidence? Show me the evidence. Well, no one asks the evidence to eat a junk food, but well, let's go a little bit about, talk about the evidence about these epidemiological studies showing how to compare these diets. And this is a good, these are two good studies. One is the Adventist Health Study 2. It's a, again, a population health study. It's still ongoing, 96,000 people. And why this is good? Because you're comparing similar, a similar, the population is one, and this population was the seven health Adventist Seven-day Adventist, uh, it's people that they don't smoke, don't drink, they usually take care of their bodies, which is their, they define as their temple. So they are doing good things. The only difference between those groups is some of them eat meat, some of them don't eat meat, some of them eat fish, some of them are vegetarian, some of them are only plant-based, 100%. That's the only difference. So you can compare them very well. The other one is the same study, or same type of study, but in the UK the Epic Oxford. So let's see what this study showed. I, talk, I know that this is a talk about diabetes, but people with diabetes die from heart disease. So heart disease is very important. So look at these two, for example, compared to similar health conscious. These are very health conscious groups. Some of them eat meat, some of them not. So in Epic Oxford, 32% lower the cardiovascular disease rates compared to lacto-over uh, vegetarians and vegans. And in the Adventist Health Study 2, compared to similar health-conscious non-vegetarians, risk of hypertension was 75% lower among vegans. And that's what we see all the time. We put these people on that. I don't want the word, I don't like the word vegan because you can eat junk. And it is, vegan is not, you know, foolproof. You can be very unhealthy eating vegan. So that's why I prefer the term plant-based. So we put people on whole food plant-based diets and they start normalizing the blood pressure in a few days. Diabetes, 
Adventist Health Study 2 compared to similar groups, 62% lower among whole food plant-based eaters compared to others, and 38% lower. So even being a lacto-over-vegetarian lacto is better than to eat meat this is compared to people that are non-vegetarians or people that eat meat. What about reversing? Where people are talking reversing diabetes. This is old study, 2006. Dr. Bernard did a, it's the gold standard. It's the randomized clinical studies. He put some patients on a plant-based diet, which consisted at that time of telling people just to not eat any animal products, no dairy, and just to limit the amount of oil. That's what he told his patients. And then he said, eat all what you want. You can eat whatever you want. The other arm of the study was follow the standard American, I mean, not the standard, I'm sorry, the ADA, the American Diabetic Association Diet, which includes dairy, includes meat, and also people count. In this diet, we tell patients you don't have to count nothing. Don't count calories, don't count nothing about the palm of the, just, we just don't count calories, we don't count carbs. People eat 80% carbs, and he showed that basically, this, in this study showing that they would reverse diabetes, Neil Bernard in Washington, D.C. And the bonus, I know we're not talking about cancer, but it's better for cancer, it's better for kidney disease, 52% less kidney disease eating plants, and 31% fewer kidney stones eating plants, diverticular disease, and you know, first the diverticular disease, same diet is totally linked to colon cancer. So in this case, 72% lower diverticular disease among people that, among people that eat um, whole food plant-based diet. So this is ongoing. We started planning two years ago. For the last year, we've been doing these jump starts in all four boroughs. We are not in Staten Island, but other than that, we are doing these workshops. It's 10 days. We give the food with the knowledge, with the classes. I have to tell you how compelling Eric Adams' story is. When I get a patient stuck, I put them in front of the computer. You know, when I started medicine, we didn't have the luxury of having a computer with internet. Now we have. So I put YouTube, I put Eric Adams, and I let a patient see his story, and it's amazing. I tell you how people, you can see their eyes starts open and say, I know this guy, he was a big, fat police officer, and now he's the you know, Brooklyn Borough President, and I, people know him, so it's so compelling for people to see Eric Adams' story. So we did one in Brooklyn uh, City Hall. We are continuing to do this monthly at least, we're going to continue to do it, and we're going to get very soon with some data. Thank you so, so very much, okay? We'd like to thank you for taking your time from your busy schedule to share that with us. That's exciting, and I can't wait to hear all that's going to come about.